Are your one-to-one meetings feeling like a chore? Do you slightly dread them? Well, in this video, I am going to share with you five signs that your one-to-ones aren't working and importantly, what to do about it. My name is Helen Bryant. I'm a leadership coach here on YouTube. I share weekly lessons, helping managers be brilliant leaders. If you're new here, welcome. For those of you returning, you probably already know this that in order to improve your leadership skills, it's all about little and often, and so much of it is in the practical application of it, doing it, practicing your craft week in, week out. That's what these videos are all about. But with one-to-ones, I would say that it is critical for a manager to get your one-to-ones right. One-to-ones are critical moments of clarity, alignment and trust, what I would call CAT. Clarity in where you're going and what you're expecting of that team member. Alignment in that they see the world the same way as you, that you can support them, you can coach them, you can unblock whatever the challenges are that they're having and a critical moment of building trust between you. So CAT, clarity, alignment and trust. And if you have CAT, with the individuals in your team and in the team as a whole, your leadership will automatically be more influential and more impactful. Now, I'm so passionate about helping you get your one-to-ones right that I have been reviewing and pulling together all the one-to-one resources that I have already shared. So if you click on the link below, you will get access to all my one-to-one resources, including meeting templates and question guides that you can use in your one-to-one. So you can get to it just down here. Okay, so let's get into what are the five signs. The first is that the meeting feels like a chore. Now, if you feel this, what you probably have is a lack of purpose and mutual understanding between you and your team members about why you are meeting. And as a consequence, you end up talking about all manner of stuff. What is really important to know about one-to-ones, it is not your one-to-one with your team member, it is their one-to-one with you. Your role is to be a guide, to be an unblocker, to be a support and to be a coach, helping them and empowering them to do their best work, to feel great about working with you and being in your team. You are helping them week in, week out, move their work forward in the most effective way. And the most common thing I see is that the needs of the team member are superseded by your needs. And yours as a manager, it becomes very much a discussion on things you want to know and things you want to talk about. So if you feel like your one-to-ones aren't delivering as best as they can be, the first thing I would suggest you do is get feedback. Ask your team members in the next one-to-one, ask the question, how could we make this meeting better? The second thing to do is get clear about what you want the one-to-one to be from your perspective. The clearer you are, the more you can articulate that. I know you work in a very busy environment. And I think one of the challenges is that it's very easy to just rock into the one-to-one and think, oh yeah, one-to-one, and then start to do the meeting and give it no preparation time. And that can be you and it can be your direct report. The consequence of that is the conversation can just go all over the place. We're trying to remember what happened at the last one. We're trying to remember things going forward. You're scrabbling around trying to find your notes. Preparation is a critical part of a good one-to-one. Now, I'm not talking a massive amount of time. If you are having a weekly one-to-one with your team members, I would say, say that's half an hour. I say you're looking at no more than 10 minutes. You're getting your head in the game. Now, the things that can really help you achieve this, one is to schedule the time. Recognize you need that little bit of time to make that moment work well. Now, this is an investment of time because the more you make that 30 minutes work really well, the more you empower your team member, the more they are able to be more accountable and to get on with their work and not be coming back all the time. So it's really important that you give it that time. 
The second thing I think really helps is using meeting templates. So a shared document between you and your team member. Now even better, you know, this can be both of you can fill it in, but really if it is the team members one-to-one, -one, it's mainly up to them to fill in their notes and keep that live. In the documents I'm sharing, I have a template, so check that out. Sign three is the flip side of that lack of preparation, which is there's no follow up on the action. So these are a series of conversations and where one finishes off, the next one starts. Now, I think two questions really help you on this. The first is asking what the person wants to focus on in that one to one at the start, because then you're going to know where they are. They often reference the thing they talked about last time just to update you anyway. but that it's always interesting to see what they say first. But then the second question is in your preparation, take note of any specific actions. And if they don't mention it and you're not sure that it has been updated, just ask, where are we on whatever the topic was? And what it says is, I am following the conversation between each of these meetings. And it brings a level of accountability to what people say they're going to do in a meeting. And again, the onus is then on them to update you. So less you chasing them. It's the power of questions in one-to-ones are so useful. If you find that your conversation is all on the work, whatever it is you're working on, one of the things you might be doing too much is focusing on the tasks. And what you want to be able to do is pull it back and talk about the person's development. Because what you want to do is make development not a thing we come to at the end of the year or maybe at the half year, but development and learning is just part of how we work. What we're doing is talking about what the work is and how that's progressing and how it is being done. So you're using each and every opportunity that you have when you're just, just the two of you together to look at both sides of that. One of the challenges I often give to managers when I'm training them is to record how much of the time are they talking and how much of the time is their direct report talking. And often when they do this, they find they are talking more often than their team member. Now, this is one of the challenges for all managers. I can't tell you how many courses I've trained this on where managers learn this lesson. As managers, I think it's very easy to slide into tell rather than asking questions. And so much of communication skills is habitual. So if you are used to sliding into somebody says something, you immediately answer and tell them the answer. This will be the behavior that you adopt in your one-to-ones. The communication skills you want to adopt in your one-to-one -one is the ability to listen well and actively to use brilliant questions. I often say that managers need to be a question ninja to be able to use different questions to dig down and find out what a person thinks about things. Not like an interrogation, but more just in a very effective two-way conversation. A third skill is to summarize what you hear being said so that you clarify and confirm that you both have the same understanding. And what that will do is amplify issues and help you and your team member to focus in on the most important part of the conversation. These are skills that will bring alive a one-to-one. -one. And the more you ask questions and guide the conversation, obviously sharing your perspective when needed, but guiding the conversation and empowering and having a coaching style, the more the person will learn. These are, the communication skills are such vital leadership skills. I would say oil in the engine of leadership and collaboration. So one-to-ones is a brilliant time to just practice that skill set, really work at having high quality, engaging two-way conversations with your team members. The trust will grow exponentially between you and them, and they will really value you as a guide, as an unblocker, as a coach, and as a support. In doing so, you will find these meetings are less chore and now a vital part 
of your management operating system, a vital moment of alignment. And the more that you can concentrate your thinking on that person into these one-to-ones, the more time it gives you to focus on the high value things that only you can focus on because you know they're empowered, you know they're gonna come to you if they need help. You are building strong relationships with them so then you can let go and let them get on, empower them. And that is at the core of high performing leadership. If you are interested in the resources, there is a link to my one-to-one toolkit below. I mentioned earlier that in one-to-ones, it's important that you have a vision for what a successful one-to-one is. In this video here, I dive more deeply into how to do good one-to-ones because it's a full tutorial. So I'd recommend checking that video out next. A little bit of time getting clear on what good looks like will make such a difference as you start to reinvigorate your one-to-ones with your team. Until next time, take care.